next speaker is Elise Shadler, Community yeah. Forest Shadler from the Vermont Urban and Community Forest Program. And uh, she will be speaking about 15,001 trees. And uh, thank you all for coming to this talk, even though it's a very ambiguous title. Um, because we care about trees in the for in the for all, all along the Forest Continuum, all the way from Church Street downtown to the top of Mount Mansfield, I'm going to be taking you on a journey to the urban landscape. So, I do work for the Vermont Urban Community Forestry Program, and the first thing I'm going to do is change the title to 16,673 Trees and Counting, because this is a story about tree inventory. We're doing, talking about trees in the urban landscape and uh, our efforts to inventory them in Vermont. So our program is a collaborative effort between Vermont Department of Forest Parks and Recreation and UVM Extension. So uh, my funding comes from the Forest Service via the state, and I actually am a UVM employee. Uh, we work with citizens and municipalities to steward and manage the trees in the places where we live and work and play. So our downtowns, we work with about 100 different communities a year, and the word urban in Vermont is sometimes people are a little weird about it because we don't have a lot of urban land, but we do work with a lot of communities. Um, what we know about the way that trees in our towns are managed in Vermont, um, there are a few staff that are trained to do this. So we actually only have three municipalities in the entire state that have a certified arborist on staff, three. Uh, so most of the tree management that's happening in towns in Vermont is being done by public works employees, roads crews, parks and rec departments, or seasonal staff. Um, there are usually very small budgets for tree care in towns, or no budget for tree care in towns. It all, all comes from kind of a lump sum for public works. And that local tree programs in Vermont are often really led by citizens. So these are often also retired citizens. So people that are really passionate about trees have a lot of time to give um, and that want to better manage the trees. Um, our traditional approach as a program, this is our 25th year as a program, so we've been doing this for a long time. Our traditional pro approach has really been about education and funding um, small projects. So we have a couple of different programs. One is the Stewardship of the Urban Landscape Education Program. The other one is the Forest Class First Protectors Program. So really engaging people through education and trying to get them to volunteer locally. Um, we also give out about $40,000 a year in small grants to communities. And most of that is for like, tree planting projects. Um, but a couple of years ago, we decided to take a, a switch in that approach and try to work more with the towns themselves and the people that are actually on the ground, ground making decisions about how trees are managed at the local level. So we applied for a Forest Service grant and our idea was that we're gonna work with 20 priority towns um, to do a three-pronged approach. One, help them understand their tree resource by doing an inventory, conducting a public tree inventory. These are trees on public places or in the public right-of-way, which is along roads. Um, the next step in the process was to help them do some planning, um, write either a management plan for their trees or an action plan based on their capacity and what they could wrap their heads around. And then the third piece is that we brought in a consulting urban forester to each of those towns to work with the people that are actually on the ground maintaining trees, public works, parks, roads crews, and volunteers for <coughs> full day training about nuts and bolts of tree care. This is the project in a nutshell. <laughs> um, this is what I've been working on for the last three years. My, my main um, workload with the program. Um, this is our generally our process. We identified our towns. We had an MOU developed with each, which, with each of the towns. We conducted the public tree inventory. We analyzed the data and provided a report. We worked with the towns to develop action plans, and then we facilitated the training. But for the purpose of the next 10 minutes, I'm going to talk about the inventory and the, and the data and the report piece. Um, so these are our 20 towns. Um, plus seven addition, additional towns. So the 20 towns in yellow were the communities we worked with that we identified and actually reached out to. The seven additional ones are towns that heard about the project and wanted to jump on and we did most of this summer. Um, so the last couple years, I've been doing a lot of tree inventory in our downtowns, which has been really, really fun. We worked with volunteers, we worked with state lands foresters, we worked with county foresters, we worked with our own staff, we worked with AmeriCorps members and even my boss's daughter. So um, it's been really fun and we've learned a lot. Um, we've gone through a couple different iterations of our inventory tool. We started the first year doing pilot inventories in Essex Junction and Colchester using Juno units in a program called Data Plus. Um, there were, there was a database from Hell that I am not a database person and this was created for us and I just could not 
handle it, a lot of errors. Um, it was not a very user friendly system. It was all on one computer, and we worked with students and volunteers uh, to collect the data. There was a lot of duplication. Um, the, the system would shut down all the time. Um, it felt a little archaic, and that was what I felt like that whole season. So that year, it just so happened that Esri uh, released a new app called Collector. Has anybody heard of Collector or used it? It's an awesome application. Basically allows you to use a map-based system to collect data on anything. Um, you define the parameters at the back end. So we worked with the Agency of Natural Resources GIS team, and we were the first ones that were using this at the state level, so we were kind of their guinea pigs, and so we worked through a lot of stuff, but now uh, the state's using it on a lot of different projects. Um, just to show you a little bit how it works, you download the app on any smart device, so we invested in 12 iPads, I think, that we use to collect the data. You download a base map while you're in Wi-Fi, and then you can actually go off of Wi-Fi to collect your data, which is a really powerful feature. Like I mentioned, you, you decide what the parameters are on the back end, and so obviously we were collecting data on trees, so you're the little blue dot, you stand next to a tree, you say I want to collect data on that tree. Um, we would work with the town to decide what other parameters other than like diameter, species, and condition we wanted to take on the tree. So, some towns that's all they that's all the information they really wanted. Some towns wanted to know, you know, if there was evidence of exit holes or combat gaps, etc. Um, and we also can attach a picture of every single tree that we inventory to the file. Um, and it all uploads to the ANR Atlas. So any of you can go onto our site and check out uh, onto the ANR Atlas site um, and, and zoom into any of those 27 towns and look at all the data that we've collected on all the trees. You can zoom in to a single tree, right click on it, and see all the data and scroll down, and then you can actually look at the picture of the tree as well. Um, so, that after we figured out that whole system, um, we've really worked closely with the GIS team, which has been really great. Um, we bought iPads. We now use Excel spreadsheets to do all the data analysis, and we send on an Excel spreadsheet to the towns after, so they have all the raw data. Um, and we have been, for the last couple of years, collecting data, like I said, with state lands foresters, with volunteers, and we're a lot happier with this system. It's much more user-friendly, and it's really easy to train people on how to use it they've ever used an iPad. Um, so now, we're done with those 20 towns. We're working on a request basis. We loan up iPads, and the communities are more responsible for helping coordinate the, the effort. Um, so this summer, we did Essex. Over the course of a week, three shifts every day. It was a, kind of a big deal, but it was fun. Waterbury, and we did Chester. Um, so this is a picture of the report that I ended up, end up sending to the towns. This is the kind of information, so by site, how many trees we found on each site, species list, full species list, a series of charts and graphs about diameter distribution, species distribution, etc. cetera. Um, if they wanted any additional health and maintenance parameters, we have that. I do a couple of really simple GIS maps, and then they work with us to develop an action plan that's really action-based. So this is it. this is our step, this is what we think it's gonna cost, this is who needs to be involved to make that decision, and then check, check, check. This is what they're using to make those steps. And then the in-house technical tree care training with Mark Dunneman has been really awesome. We've, we've been able to work with over 90 municipal staff, which is huge for our program to have access to the people that are actually looking at trees and, make, and managing trees on a daily basis. Um, I'm not going to run through this, but this, this has been a, pro a project that's really been received well by the communities. This is, it's a lot of information that they can actually use um, to, to influence how their select boards and their decision makers are thinking about trees as part of the infrastructure of their town. Um, so it's been really awesome and we hope to keep doing the project. But what I want to do for the next five minutes is just um, show you some of the data. And I actually ended up taking all 27 data sets and pulling out some, some collaborative or you know, comprehensive inventory results. So 16,673 trees so far. Here's our genus count. Not surprisingly, we have a lot of maple on our streets and in our parks and downtowns, followed by crabapple. And if you know anything about urban forestry, this is planted a lot because you can plant it under utility buyers. And it's, it's a small tree that's available in nurseries a lot. And then we have a lot of ash, which we, we knew, but I didn't know it was going to be this much in Vermont. Um, some towns 
Stowe Village, up to 50, upwards of 50% of their village trees are ash trees. So this is important for us to know as we continue to work with towns to prepare for emerald ash borer. Species-wise, oh no. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll leave you hanging. I know uh, we're about 11% sugar maple, 10% Norway maple, and then from there it goes crab apple, red maple, ash, honey locust. So these are all trees that were planted really heavily after we lost our elms back mid century. So not surprising to see those. Oh, sorry, the thing pop up. Condition distribution: about 8% of our trees are in good shape. Um, 1% dead, so that translates to about 250 trees that we found total. Um, this is important in urban areas as we, because dead trees along roads or in parks pose a risk to human safety, property damage, etc. So this, it was always a recommendation to make sure to take care of those trees first. Diameter distribution, um, not that many trees in large diameter, not too surprising. Um, lots of trees in kind of the 6 to 18 inch uh, diameter distribution, so a lot of trees that are kind of approaching maturity. You can also think about this in relation to Dutch Elm disease. Burlington, for example, lost 11,000 street trees when Dutch Elm came through. So um, and Burlington was not in our inventory, but it's the same kind of distribution that we're seeing. Those trees that were planted to replace those elms in the <coughs> Um We also, for not all the towns, but some of the towns, looked at potential tree planting locations. If the town wanted us to help them kind of prioritize where they can think about planting new trees, we would do that throughout the process. Um, so lots of trees in St. Albans, lots of potential in St. Albans to plant trees. But uh, you know, this, was, this was thinking about what size of tree we could put in um, and where would be appropriate sites without doing any of the now. Um, then the really cool thing about urban forestry is that there, anyone heard of iTree? So iTree is a Forest Service developed and funded uh, program that's all online. It's a suite of tools that allows you to assign a dollar, one of the tools allows you to assign a dollar value to the ecosystem services provided by trees. So you pull your um, data set through iTree and it pops out these great numbers that are all backed by really complex models that are all cited on the iTree website but the user doesn't have to necessarily understand those models. So um, this is one way to look at it. I've pulled all the data through iTree and um, you can see kind of the totals down here, but the way that we present it to the communities in the report is in this nice graphic. So we know that those 16,000 trees are providing annually about $1.2 million of benefits, which breaks down to about $100 per tree. Um, and that, that one of the important, important points that we, we make sure the towns know is that as the trees increase, increase in age and have larger canopies, their uh, benefits will increase as well. So making sure they understand the importance of maintaining those young trees so that they grow large and provide more benefits. Um, so I just am going to leave with three lessons learned because we, we learned a lot for this project and it's been one of the most rewarding projects that we've worked on in terms of understanding really the pulse of what's going on at the local level with, with tree management in Vermont. Um, one is the, the ash piece. So understanding that we do have about 10% of our street trees statewide that are going to be ash trees. Most of these are green ash. Um, so this really reinforces how we're approaching towns to um, reiterate the importance of planning for emerald ash borer. The second is around diversity. We have a lot of maples, which is really scary when you think about the threat of Asian longhorn beetle for many reasons in Vermont. But um, so really trying to get towns to think about when you're, they're replacing trees, don't use. Everybody likes to use maple because it's native and it's our state tree. But really thinking about what else can we plant that's native, that's available at a nursery, um, that is going to help increase your diversity. And then the third piece is, um, you know, we really kind of understood at a much more ground level that um, tree care in towns in Vermont is generally in one line, one line item, and that's tree removal. And that planting is usually happening through grant funds. We're really trying to get towns to think about advocating for a line item for management. So can we take that removal budget and just cut it in half, have some uh, funds allocated to pruning trees, because if you prune them when they're young, structurally they're gonna grow into um, large shade trees that can be long-lived and can provide many more benefits. Mm -hmm. um, this is a really bad slide, but <laughs> if you wanna check out any of the reports, every single report that we've written is linked to our website. That's the um, 
btcommunityforestry.org under our resources section. Um, and we will be hopefully applying for a second edition of this grant since it was such a successful project and we got some really great feedback about what additional support we could provide to municipal programs. And that's all I got. Thank you. 